May I speak in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel writer in Matthew tells us that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Now they knew exactly where Jesus had been buried. These two Marys had been there at the foot of the cross. They had followed Jesus as his body was taken down and carried to the tomb. They had watched as Joseph of Arimathea wrapped Jesus in a clean cloth and laid him inside. But before sunrise, the two Marys returned to see the tomb. They're not carrying spices to anoint Jesus' body because they had already seen the stone rolled over the entrance. So why did they go to the tomb? What did they expect to see there? Maybe they came to the tomb to see just that, the stone in front of the door and continue their grieving, their hope being that returning to the last place that they saw their Lord, they might feel close to him, and so they go there to continue in their grief. Or maybe they go to see the tomb to make sure that the Roman or Jewish authorities have not done something to it. They have come here to see to make sure that it has not been defaced or defiled. They have come to see that it is as they left it, stone in place, Jesus' body inside. Or maybe in the darkness of that new morning, the two Marys still have hope and believe. They've counted the days since they saw him go into the tomb. One, two, three. And they are hoping that what Jesus had told them will still come true. That though the Son of Man will be betrayed and killed, on the third day he will be raised. And so they come to see the tomb and hope to find it empty. Their first glimpse, right, as they get close, the tomb would look like it had when they left it, except for now there are Roman guards standing there. The stone was in place, but they would be able to see that there was no damage or defacement to, to it, just two men there. But then as they get close, they feel the earth shake like it did the day Jesus died. But this time when they look up, they don't see a dead man on a cross. They see an angel of the Lord descending and coming and rolling away the stone and sitting upon it. And they see that this angel's appearance is like lightning flashing and slashing through the darkness of the morning, driving away all the shadows. Though the sun was still rising, this angel of the Lord makes it impossible to not see what has occurred. The tomb is empty. Now the Roman guards are filled with fear and fall like dead men. But the women, ever steadfast, though they are afraid, are not faint of heart. And so they stand ready to hear the message from the angel who begins with, Do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus who was killed. But he has been raised. And he is not here. Come and see where he had been laid. But then you must go and you must tell his disciples what you have seen. Now Matthew doesn't tell us if the two Marys went and looked into the tomb, but instead makes it clear that they quickly left that place in fear but with great joy. And it is only once they have left there, once they are on their way back to tell the disciples what has happened, it is only then that they meet the risen Jesus. And upon him greeting them, they grab hold of his body and they fall down and worship him. And no matter how much they wanted to stay there with Jesus in that moment, he repeats the words of the angels and says, go tell my disciples what has happened and that I will meet them in Galilee. We have walked 40 days through Lent. We have journeyed through Holy Week. And here we are on this new morning. 
What did you come here to see? Did you come here grieving? Did you come here uncertain or filled with doubt? Did you maybe come here in hope that the words of Easter would rekindle the fire of faith within you? Did you come in fear? Do you dare come bringing your joy? What are you hoping to see in this moment at this place? The Easter message is one that is meant to be heard and seen and most importantly to be acted upon. We can go from here uncertain or in fear and in great joy because we know that Jesus has already gone ahead of us and will meet us in Galilee. Jesus has already gone ahead of us into our homes, into our neighborhoods, into our communities. Jesus has gone ahead of us to our schools and our workplaces. Jesus has gone ahead of us to our jails and our prisons, to our hospitals, to our rehab facilities. Jesus has gone ahead of us even to our courts and our legislatures, to our mayors and our governors. Jesus has gone ahead of us to the places where we are most afraid to go. He's gone ahead of us to the places of violence and hatred, to the places of disappointment and heartbreak. He has gone ahead of us to meet and gather around him all the people that the world has discarded. This morning you have come here to see the empty tomb, to hear the Easter story again, to meet the risen Christ in bread and wine, and to follow the risen Jesus into the world. We may be afraid. We may be uncertain, we may have doubt, we may be grieving, we may be holding on to a slim glimpse of joy. But on this Easter morning, we can go forth in faith because the God of earth-shaking love and death-shattering life has already gone ahead of us and will meet us there. This is the message to you on this Easter morning. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.